As a result of law review articles that I published in the 1990s, I began receiving requests to get involved in ERISA subrogation litigation. In four of the cases in which I have been involved, the issue has risen to the level of the U.S. Supreme Court. My first involvement was in the case of Reynold Metals Company v. Ellis, shortly after the Supreme Court granted cert in November of 2000. This case was ultimately resolved by agreement of the parties after cert had been granted. My second involvement was in Sereboff v. Mid-Atlantic Medical Services, decided by the Supreme Court in 2006. I assisted in the briefing in the Supreme Court proceedings and also assisted the lead attorney, Peter Stris, in preparation for oral argument the day before it was argued. I was present in the Supreme Court courtroom in Washington, D.C. when the case was argued. My third involvement involved the case of Walmart v. Shank, a case presented to the Supreme Court in 2008, and this case is the primary subject of this video. My fourth involvement was in U.S. Airways v. McCutcheon, decided by the court in 2013. I co-authored an amicus brief filed on behalf of seven trial lawyer organizations across the country and also on behalf of United Policyholders, a consumer protection organization. This video presents an explanation of the Walmart v. Shank situation, my third experience in the Supreme Court arena, which was resolved in 2008. The next time I got involved in a case was about four months after the Sereboff decision. Uh, there was a trial court decision in Missouri in Walmart versus Shank. And I was not involved at the trial level. I wish I had been involved, had the opportunity to be involved in the trial level. It was an adverse decision uh, uh, by the trial court. That was appealed to the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, heard by a three-judge panel, also an adverse decision. I was involved in the briefing of that. Uh, we filed a motion for rehearing in bank in the Eighth Circuit. That was denied, and so we filed our petition for writ of certiorari in the Supreme Court. That was eventually denied. The day the court uh, denied cert, um, I'm going to show you a couple video clips. The first video clip uh, comes from CNN. It tells the story of Walmart versus Shank. This story aired the day the court denied cert. I'm inspired by if it's sexy or not. Debbie Shank remembers her account in German, but she has no idea what she had for breakfast or what my name is minutes after meeting me. Debbie has no short-term memory. In May of 2000, a semi-truck plowed into her minivan on this Missouri highway. Debbie's brain took the brunt of it. The team threw her window and probably hit her head. I remember. Today, she lives in a nursing home. Jim Shank works two jobs to help pay the bills, and his bank account may soon take another hit. Eight years ago, when she started stocking shelves at this Walmart near her home, Debbie signed up for the company's health and benefits plan, so she was covered, and her family says the bills were paid promptly. What Debbie didn't notice, her husband says, is a tiny clause in the plan's paperwork that says Walmart has the right to recoup medical expenses if the employee also collects damages in a lawsuit. In 2002, the Shanks settled with the trucking company. After legal fees, $417,000 was put in a trust for Mrs. Shanks' care. The family's lawyer says he told Walmart about the settlement. Then in 2005, Walmart's health plan asked for its money back and sued the Shanks for about $470,000, money it had paid to cover Debbie's medical bills. The court ruled in Walmart's favor. The fact is, is Walmart isn't doing anything wrong here. It is their legal right to recoup this money. They're quite within their rights. But I just wonder if they would need it that bad. We tried to ask Walmart why go after the money. The company's net sales, third quarter of 2007, were $90 billion. A Walmart spokesman who called Mrs. Shank's case unbelievably sad told us, Walmart's plan is bound by very specific rules. We wish it could be more flexible in Mrs. Shank's case, since her circumstances are clearly extraordinary. But this is done out of fairness to all associates who contribute to and benefit from the plan. Do you think Walmart should make an exemption for your family? My idea of a win-win, you keep the paperwork that says you won and let us keep the money so I can take care of my wife. If Walmart's health plan gets the money back, Jim says he won't be able to pay for his wife's care or his own. 
he's recovering from prostate cancer. He may lose his car, and he won't be able to send his youngest son to college. Who needs the money more, a disabled lady in a wheelchair with uh, no future whatsoever? Does she need it, or does Walmart need 90 billion plus 200,000? The Shanks lawyer says Walmart is entitled to only about $100,000. Right now, about $277,000 remains in the trust, far short of what Walmart wants back. Oh, well, that's one she got you for Christmas. Last year, Jim divorced Debbie so she could get more money from Medicaid. The trauma to Debbie's brain was so severe, Jim says she won't remember we were here visiting her. In fact, she doesn't even remember the accident that put her here. She's in a private room for now due to severe mood swings and a tendency to scream, all related to her injuries. But she may not be able to afford her own room much longer. Last summer, the Shanks appealed the ruling in Walmart's favor and lost. One week later, another terrible loss. Their son, 18-year-old Jeremy, in Iraq just two weeks, was killed. Debbie went to the funeral, but doesn't remember her son is dead. What? When reminded, it was as if she was hearing it for the first time. One final push is underway. Jim is petitioning the U.S. Supreme Court to hear Debbie's case. What's left of Debbie's trust will remain frozen as the battle rages on. Randy Kay, CNN, Jackson, Missouri. Keith Overman started running Walmart as the worst person in the world uh, on consecutive days, beginning nine days after the denial of the petition for writ of cert. And he vowed to continue to run the story as Walmart as the worst person until Walmart uh, gave up in the case. And our winner is Walmart. Nearly eight years ago, a Walmart shelf stalker in Missouri got broadsided by a semi. Deborah Shank, now 52, is brain damaged in a wheelchair in a nursing home. She needs 24-hour-a-day care. She got $700,000 in a settlement from the trucking company. After attorney's fees, $417,000 was left for a trust fund to make her shattered life a little bit better. And Walmart promptly sued Mrs. Shank for the money. Because, says spokesperson Weber, Walmart's health plan says, and your company's plan may also say this, you better check. If you get really hurt and you receive damages in a settlement, your employer can sue to get back anything it paid you for your treatment. So they sued this woman who had $417,000 for $470,000. Now, contrary to general opinion, Walmart is not owned by the devil. Its stockholders are not uniformly horrible people. The stores often do not destroy and sometimes even improve communities. But you know why people think of Walmart and evil in the same sentence? because of the crap you guys do like this. Instead of letting this one go, and maybe even putting out a press release saying, we take care of our own. Maybe you get $470,000 worth of good publicity. No, now you get this. Walmart's profit last year was over $11 billion, including $470,000 it got back from Mrs. Shank, who is, between the truck that hit her and what you amoral Walmart trolls did to her, she is so confused that she doesn't really understand that six days after you beat her in court, her 18-year-old son was killed fighting for this country in Iraq. Walmart, may your stores melt in the hot sun. Today's worst persons in the world. As a result of the public outcry for justice on behalf of Mrs. Shank, Walmart relinquished and allowed Mrs. Shank to keep the entire recovery. Walmart also amended the terms of its plan documents so as to provide accommodations for future victims, such as Mrs. Shank, in hardship cases. Under the new terms of its plan documents, petitions for relief are submitted to a designated committee. During the years subsequent to Walmart's decision in 2008, I have assisted various attorneys in making and submitting petitions for waiver to the Walmart's committee. In each of these cases in which I've been involved, Walmart has provided a complete lien relinquishment, with the most recent relinquishment occurring in early 2019. A detailed history of my involvement in the Walmart versus Shank proceeding has been documented in an article written by my associate, Marilyn Trevs. Marilyn's article meticulously traces the interactions between Mrs. Shank's primary counsel and myself, as well as the numerous communications with members of the media. 
The spark for the national outcry for justice began with a front page story in the Wall Street Journal. And Maryland's article traces seven weeks of intensive email exchanges and phone conversations with the Wall Street reporter. Maryland's article is entitled, Public Pressure Reverses Adverse ERISA Result for Deborah Shank, and it was first published by the Kentucky Association for Justice in its journal. That article may be viewed and downloaded at my website. Go to erisawithprofessorbaron.com. Click on the link to the U.S. Supreme Court cases. The discussion of Walmart versus Shank is in the first paragraph, and Maryland's article is linked in this paragraph, together with a link to Walmart's letter describing how its plan documents have been modified.